On January 27th, DraftKings sent an email to their customers saying the biggest winner last night was Jonte Porter Unders. Now, most people don't even know who that is, but somebody did and made bank. One better made a six play parlay on Jonte Unders for 80,000 bucks and won $1.1 million. Normally the cap is like a one to $2,000 bet on props, so this looked off. Then sure enough, March 20th, Jonte Porter Unders won millions again. Something's going on. Sportsbooks alerted the NBA to suspicious betting activity and Porter is now being investigated. When you watch the film, nothing stands out too much. A fringe player setting screens and stuff. Some people say he tried to miss this banked three. Look at that guilty face when it goes in. But what about this? Tom Havistro pointed this out. Porter's number 34 in gold. At the end of the quarter, in position to get a rebound, but his man pulls away. Yes, he is safe. But then the ball bounces right to him. Instead of grabbing the board though, what was that? He like taps it to his teammate at the end of the quarter. Have you ever seen that before? Now that was the third rebound of the game and it's only the first quarter. The total's four and a half. So you can see Jonte go immediately to the coaches in the background and start pointing to his eye. So he left the game having re-aggravated an eye injury. Nowhere in the minutes he played did he get hit in the eye. He wasn't even on the injury report before the game. But maybe he got that board and was like, Three in the first quarter, I am out. A sportsbook employee told ESPN, people were trying to do whatever they could to bet Jonte Porter props against the Clippers. And then just a few days ago, the same thing. We had a bunch of people trying to bet the under for more. So it looks like Jonte told people to bet his unders because that's what he could control. Maybe an organized crime person approached him to pay a flat fee to hit the under. Then that mob guy sent runners all over the country to different books to place bets. It's really suspicious if one person makes a huge bet, but spread out less red flags. But after getting away with it, they did it again? So stupid. John Day Porter is a random player, but that's why he would do this. Porter's on a two-way contract in Toronto, which means G League and the NBA. He makes 415K per year, which is a ton of money, but not among his peers. He is surrounded by millionaires including his brother, Michael Porter Jr., who signed a $179 million contract. I am not saying this is right. This is why the mafia might have targeted him. So what happens next? Well, in the new CBA, the rule says, any player who directly or indirectly wagers money or anything of value on any game shall be subject to a penalty. The penalty for such offense shall be within the absolute and sole discretion of the commissioner may include a fine, suspension, expulsion, and or perpetual disqualification. So it's up to commissioner Adam Silver. And honestly, he is lucky it is Jonte Porter. He could throw the book at this dude, suspend him for life to scare other players. But this might not be the last time. And if he suspends Jonte for life, what happens if it's a top 100 player next time? You gonna kick him out too? According to The Ringer, the top 100 ends with Terry Rozier, Chris Paul, Isaiah Hartenstein, Walker Kessler, and Brandon Miller. Now some casual fans don't know them outside of CP3, but it would be a huge deal if any of these guys got banned for life. Jonte is such a fringe player, Silver could probably suspend him for two years and it's basically a lifetime ban. But this kind of thing was bound to eventually happen. Silver was the first commissioner to come out for legalized gambling in 2014. One of my most important responsibilities as commissioner of the NBA is to protect the integrity of professional basketball and preserve public confidence in the league and our sport. I believe that sports betting should be brought out of the underground and into the sunlight where it can be appropriately monitored and regulated. Which is exactly what happened. But I guarantee people will say this is proof the NBA is rigged. This kind of thing probably happened in the past, but we never found out about it because gambling was illegal. Now we've got companies like DraftKings who can call up the NBA and say, hey, we noticed something weird. Back in the day, an illegal bookie ain't doing that. So because it's legal, Jonte Porter may have gotten caught here, 
but at the same time, it erodes confidence in the NBA. Obviously, Underdog is a sponsor of this channel, but I'm trying to tell this story and report on it as unbiased as possible. But legal gambling is why Jonte Porter got caught. What's crazier is what happened in baseball. Now, you might have heard this story, but most people don't know what actually happened. Shohei Otani is like the Victor Wembanyama of baseball. A new player from overseas can do things we haven't seen before. But this week, the FBI says he sent an illegal bookie a million bucks. So Shohei's rep said it was actually his interpreter betting on sports and Otani was covering his friend's losses. The interpreter then gets interviewed and says, yeah, Otani didn't trust me. So he logged onto his account and transferred the money himself. No problem. Except you can't send a million bucks to an illegal bookie. That's a crime. Otani could get fined, suspended, go to jail, get deported. So his reps changed their original story and said, wait, actually the interpreter stole the money and Shohei didn't even know. How obvious can it be that this man is the fall guy for his famous friend? An interpreter makes, I don't know, let's just say like six figures a year. Reports say this dude was $4.5 million in debt. What bookie would allow that guy to get that big in debt unless he knew who was actually paying the bill? So baseball is investigating, but nobody thinks that they're gonna suspend their biggest star. Baseball actually looks really hypocritical here. At least the NBA can get out of this one looking somewhat clean. But will that kind of thing happen in the NBA? Well, gambling has been legal in Europe for a long time. Their biggest scandal was back in 2009. Around 200 people, including 32 players, were involved in rigging about 200 games across nine countries. But here's the catch. The most high profile rig game was played in Turkey. The rest of the matches were teams no one's ever heard of. People thought it might be in the Premier League or maybe La Liga, even in France, but no. It's just not worth it for super rich players to get involved. So criminals target refs and fringe players like Jonte Porter who don't make that much money. And the average salary in the NBA is 10 million bucks the highest average in American pro sports. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, obviously not, but I would first look at you know college sports where this has happened before, or even low level NFL players before the NBA. So hopefully the NBA puts a limit on fringe players like this and keeps a close eye on their referees, because otherwise another scandal is coming. But one thing the NBA would never admit is changing their rules mid season. But there is definite evidence Evidence, they did just that and lied to their fans about it. So I broke down the entire thing and what they're actually covering up. 